Heidi ho there friends and neighbors Bobby here today hey folks today we're going to do a review video on an old John Deere L120 riding lawnmower okay guys this has been my lawnmower that I've used here at my home for the last 20 years okay and today I decided that we'd do a little review video on it we'll do a recap on all the repairs that I've done on it over the years and how much I think I remember I paid for it so stay tuned guys okay guys here's my son nathaniel sitting up here on the mower how you like this mower son uh it's 20 years old it's 20 years old but you still like it right yeah okay guys that's right i've had this thing for 20 years or more i can't remember exactly when i bought it i bought it at a home depot okay and let me just tell you the story about the day that i bought this mower okay i actually had my heart set on a um zero turn mower that I believe, uh, I'm not even gonna mention the name of the store that had it for sale, um, but it was a product, it's kind of an off-brand uh, zero turn mower that I had went and looked at and actually purchased. And it was about $2,500 at the time. And I brought it home, my dad went with me because he had a trailer. And we bought that mower, brought it home, and I took out across this front yard here, and I had a lot better grass back then, okay? I took out across here, and on the highest setting, it scalped my front yard, okay? I went two or three passes. I was so disappointed, and we decided to take the pressure washer and clean that sucker back up, took it back over to that store, told them I was not satisfied with it because it was scalping my yard, and they gave me my money back. We went straight down to Home Depot and bought this L120 uh, John Deere. And it's been a good mower ever since. Uh, one thing that I liked about the L120 was because it had the Briggs & Stratton engine. And if I remember correctly, the sticker's going on it now, but I believe it's a 22 horse, 20 horse or 22 horse uh John De uh, Briggs and Stratton engine. And to me, this engine actually sounded better than the L110, I believe that they had at that time, that had a different engine. And I can't remember exactly what engine it was in it, but this Briggs actually sounded a little bit better and it had a 48 inch deck. I really wasn't looking for a 48 inch at that time because I think the L110 might've had a 44 that might've suited my yard a little bit better. But now that I got this one, I'm sure glad that we ended up getting this mower because it's been a great mower all these years. Okay guys, first of all, I'm gonna talk about the general operation and where some of the components are located on this mower uh, in case you do are getting ready to purchase maybe one of these used or whatever and just want to see how to operate it. We'll just, we'll, we'll go around real quick and just take a look at everything. Um, first of all, you lift the seat and here's where you put gas in. Okay. Right here. You can unscrew that and you can put gas in. I'm not real sure, um, exactly how much it holds, but I tell you what, I can always fill it up and usually cut my yard two or three times. And we have a customer that we actually use this mower to cut their one acre lot. I have no problem cutting a one acre lot. We still have gas left when we do that. Um, Back here on the back, you can pull this pin and you can actually push the mower. See, I can drag the mower. It kind of takes it out of gear to where you can easily roll it around. But if you cranked it up and tried to take off on it, it's not gonna go anywhere until you push that pin back in, okay? You see, that kind of makes it a little harder to roll now. Uh, right over here is your height selector. I usually cut on three inches because uh, most time we're cutting fescue around here, but you can set it all the way up. Usually I pull it up on four inches height when we're putting it up on the trailer and you can drop it down as low as, I think about one and a half is as far as it go right now. And the reason for that is because I have these wheels here set to where it can't go any lower than that. So it cannot scalp a yard, okay? I, I see no reason in ever mowing any less than an inch and a half anyway. But if you wanted to 
mow at a closer distance, you can move these wheels that are down the deck. I think it's got about three or four different selective holes there to where you can move that around. One thing here, there's a cup holder right here. If you want to put your drink while you're mowing right here, you have another little compartment here as well. Uh, right here on this side, this is a hydrostat transmission. You push this pedal down to go forward. If you need to go backwards, you can push that pedal down to go backwards. Now it used to have the function, it had a lockout to where if you had the um, uh, belts and gauges, the blades going, you had to push this yellow button right here and hold it down if you were going to go backwards. Something has happened over the years and that function no longer works and that's fine with me. Uh, I don't have, that's one less thing I have to do when mowing, but it is a safety option, okay? Uh, right here is the parking brake. Nathaniel, push this down. Parking brake is, is right here, now let up. So that will hold the mower in place when you're uh, moving it, transporting it on a trailer or so forth. Go ahead and release that now. To release it, all you gotta do is put your foot back on the pedal and then push that back down, okay? And we're good to go. And under the hood here, let's show a couple maintenance items that you can do. Uh, air filter is replaced by simply removing these two screws here and you can replace the filter. Oil filter is right down here on the side. It's real easy to get to. And to drain the oil, right over here, real simple. You don't even need a wrench. You can just, it's, a, it's like a plastic cap and you push in and, and turn it counterclockwise and, and it pulls right off. Has an O-ring seal. Right here is where you add oil and the weight of oil that you put in is 10W30. And I can't remember exactly how much, but I would just check it on the st stick. It's somewhere between a quart and a quart and a half that you would fill this mower back up with. Your battery is located right here, okay? Now, over the years, I've probably put 10 batteries in this thing because of the fact these little, these little um, lawn tractor batteries just seem to get, get worse and worse over the years. I don't know what the deal is with them, but it uh, seems like every season, just about, you gotta put a battery in a, in a lawnmower. But uh, the tires have held up real well. Um, I've always been happy with the uh, size of the tires. Uh, I think I've even plugged the back one a time or two and the front ones leak a little bit of air, but I just pump it up every time before I get ready to use this, no big deal. Um, let's see if there's anything. I'll tell you what, we're gonna, we're gonna crank it up for you. I'm just gonna show you how to crank it. Right over here at the control panel. Uh, let's see if I can get right over here and show them Nathaniel. And we'll let you crank it up for us. Here's the key switch right here. And Nathaniel's gonna crank it for us. This is the control lever for the PTO. We'll engage the blades here in just a moment. This is our choke and this is our throttle. So right now, not sure if we got to choke it or not um, since we've already cranked it, but we'll go ahead and try anyway. I'm gonna put it on full choke. I'm gonna bring the throttle up just a little bit. Go ahead and push down on the brake. Uh, the brake over here, you want to push down like he's doing with his foot where you can uh, actually start it. Now go ahead and crank it, Nathaniel. Okay, first, you, first you need to do it. You've got, you gotta be very careful. This <laughs> one, this one is very old. <laughs> okay, All go right. ahead. All right. All right, there we go. So now, with it running, you wanna cut the choke down. Hey guys, I don't know if you can hear me, but this engine still runs pretty smooth, okay? I'm gonna go ahead Give it full throttle. I'm gonna let Nathaniel take off across the yard and just mow one strip, okay? Can you go mow one strip and come straight back, okay? Yeah. All right, now he's gonna do that. He's gonna engage the uh, PTO right here. I'm gonna go ahead and engage it.
jalapeno. All right, uh, cut. Cutting pretty good? Yeah, it cuts pretty good. Yeah, it does. Guys, we actually, here recently, we, we um, sharpened the blades on this deck. And I, I, that's gonna go ahead and take me to the, my next little thing. I'm gonna talk about all the repairs that I've had to do to this mower over the years. Now, I believe on this mower here we got currently, it does have an hour meter as well. We got 305 hours on this thing. Okay, so to sharpen the blades, I've actually replaced the blades at one point and I've put a one spindle on this deck over the years, okay? But I actually find a lifting point underneath the front end and I put it up on a jack stand and I go from underneath and there's two bolts on each blade and I back them out usually with my impact, sharpen my blades and reinstall. And I always make sure I put anti-seize on those bolts to where they'll keep coming out the next time when I need to uh, sharpen the blades. So, like I said, one thing I replaced on this engine is a spindle and a set of blades in the past. I've also put a new belt on this thing uh, in the past. The most major repair that I have done is we replaced the right cylinder head on this engine, okay? We done that about a year ago. That was the last repair that we done. Uh, that was the most intense that we done, but the parts were less than $200 to do the whole job. So I went ahead and decided to go ahead and keep fixing her up. Now, another thing that we replaced is the PTO, which is located right underneath the engine here. You can't really see it, but the PTO drive we replaced, um, probably three years ago. I believe I purchased that off of Amazon. I found one that would fit this mower and it was under $200 as well. So every repair that I've had to do has usually been $200 or less. So that's one of the reasons that I've kept, kept this old John Deere going and kept it on the road, okay? And I will honestly say it has been a really good mower. It's always mowed real well. Um, the, the, the deck has always cut evenly. And, you know, I've never had like a problem with one side scalping the ground and the other side not. It's just always worked out good. Never had any problems with the deck adjustment of any kind. All that stuff's just always worked out real well. And another thing, actually just recently, I discovered this. There are grease fittings on your spindles right here and turn that wheel all the way to the left, Nathaniel. And right in here on the wheel itself, I think we're actually turned away from it, but there's a grease fitting in this area as well on each wheel. So I went 20 years without even greasing it and it's still doing good. And, but now we actually grease it. We grease it probably every other time that we, uh, you know, do the blades or whatever. Uh, since we are using this mower more often now, we're mowing a couple other people's yards with our stump grinding business. Now, one thing, you know, this is definitely not a commercial mower. It's, uh, it's definitely residential. You can see the thickness of the deck material here is probably um, between a 16th and an eighth of an inch. I'd probably say like 90 thousandths or so. I'm sure you could look it up and see exactly what it is. And if you notice right here in this one area, I got a little blowout going here. Something here that I've run over over the years blew a hole right through this thing, okay? Because the metal has gotten thinner, okay? From rust and so forth and probably corrosion from uh, fertilizers and such, so forth. But it does have a hole right there, okay? So I may end up uh, taking this deck off at some point, doing a more thorough examination. I might be able to fabricate me a piece of metal over that and weld it to correct it. Uh, if the deck seems to be uh, worse in a lot of areas, I may actually replace it um, as long as this thing keeps on going. Now, one thing I done years ago, this thing come with covers that covered each one of these spindles. And early on, I took these things off and threw them away. And here's why. I mean, it's definitely a safety item. You wanna have them in place. But for me, they were collecting 
uh, grass clippings and everything would stay underneath there. And I knew that that was gonna probably cause a corrosion and rusting and rottening out problem, okay? So that's why I took them things off years ago to where I could blow these things off on a regular basis. And that might be why the deck is holding up pretty good in the spindle area, which is actually the most important area that you would want your deck to hold up on anyway. So just a little point there, guys. Uh, but do know you're throwing caution to the wind when you remove any type of safety cover. I do not recommend that. That's just what I decided to do. Okay, guys, I think that just about wraps it up. I don't know what more I can say about this mower other than I've had it for 20 years. It's been a good one. Um, it's mowed this yard here, this little half acre lot where we live for many, many years and probably going to keep up, keep it around and mow for many, many more. We're actually in the market for a new zero turn for our uh, business, but we do, we'll probably keep using this here in conjunction with that as well as we go on because it's a good little mower. What do you think, Nathaniel? Yeah. You've been happy with it, haven't you? Yeah. And this is what you learned how to mow grass on, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So guys, thank you for stopping by today, checking out our little review on the old school John Deere L120. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you next time. All right, folks, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and tell all your friends about us. Come back and visit us again. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.